Hello there Together Learners. Welcome back. Today in this video we're going to talk about that kind of ancient skill of typing. But we still need it so much. Most of us that are using computers a lot type every day, hours on end. So if we learn how to use that keyboard more efficiently, learn how to touch type, we can save hours, months off of our life being more efficient than this. So in this video we're going to tell you all the things you need to know to improve your efficiency in getting things that are in your head into a PC so you can, you know, I don't know, spend your time doing other stuff, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. Coming right up in this video, touch typing. Right, touch typing. It's, we're going to save ourselves time and effort by learning how to be more efficient and more uh, put information into a computer with better ease. And so these are the things that I'm going to be talking about today, starting with what is touch typing, how to position your body and your equipment, uh, your kind of keyboard and why it's laid out the way it is, and how to position your hands and your fingers so they can start dancing around without you having to look at them. And then we're going to talk about how you can measure your speed and measure your improvement and some tools, some tips, and some things to help you keep going in your journey to become a better typer. You can look down in the description to see some uh, timestamps so you can possibly skip ahead if you'd like to. But first, what is touch typing? Well, in essence, it's using your fingers, all of them, and being able to input whatever you want into a computer, whatever characters, no matter what language it is, without looking at the keyboard, without looking at that keys. Um, so if you're able to use all your fingers and you're able to put whatever you want, input whatever characters you want into a computer, you already know how to touch type. But in this video, even though you might know how to touch type, you might not be doing it correctly, and we're gonna show you some things to do it more efficiently and do it in a more healthy way as well. So, touch typing, using all your keys, not looking at the keyboard. Do not look down. I'm going to say that a few times in this video. Before you get started in your journey to become a better typist, it's really important to talk about and think about something called ergonomics. Now, this is the study of positioning your body, positioning your equipment like your keyboard, your mouse, your monitor, your desk, in a way that's comfortable and natural to you. So, whatever feels when your body is relaxed, at its natural position, which means uh, your, your monitor is at a place where your eyes are looking like straight ahead, where you don't feel like you have to strain and use your muscles to look up or down uh, in, with any kind of uh, use of your muscles that could strain you over time. Your arms are, uh, and shoulders are nice and relaxed and at a 90 degree angle, sitting on some arm rest and sitting on the table and then your back is that also at a 90 degree angle and your feet are in front of you uh, flat on the ground so your chair is high enough off the ground with that. I have a standing desk and I often go from standing to, to sitting also because I feel like you need to move your body. Taking breaks every now and again is also crucial to ergonomics. Just to give you a look to what my setup looks like here, um, I got my shoulders relaxed. I position the height of my desk so I've got my hands on some armrests and I've even got an ergonomic keyboard here where I can position my hands in a way that I'm just resting here and also I've got my hands when I'm resting cupped in a way because usually our, our natural resting position is not straight or not like in a holding balls it's just a nice little cup and I rest my hands down here nice and safe too and I can move my hand over and I got my mouse very sensitive so I don't even have to move my mouse very uh, my hand very much to move my mouse right that is an in, in essence ergonomics so if you want to kind of measure your desk and your keyboard but basically the rule of thumb is sit down at your desk put your hands on it and feel around your muscles to see if you're actually having to use any of them just to stay in a stationary position to type and if you're using a muscle, maybe you're using your neck to lift your head or you're using your shoulders to be on the desk a little bit, that means that those are going to get stressed out over time. And to start off in the right position is crucial because you can develop things like carpal tunnel and other kind of health hazards 
and back strain, neck strain uh, moving forward if you don't take a little bit of time and set yourself up with great ergonomics moving forward. Right? So let's talk about that keyboard. What's that down in front of you? It's called a QWERTY. And because it's called a QWERTY because that row of keys right there on your keyboard from the top to the right, Q-U-E-R-T-Y, QWERTY. And that's pretty strange, right? Uh, you would have thought maybe it would be in alphabetical order so you can kind of feel in your head and kind of know where the keys are. Maybe it's the most commonly used keys or closer to the middle or so you don't have to move. No, that's not it either. There's a very good reason for the way the QWERTY keyboard was laid out back in the day, but it doesn't make much sense now. We just use it because that's the way we created it. And the reason for which is this old guy. You see how this typewriter has got these kind of arms and levers that when you push down on the key, a little lever slaps a ink ribbon, which then goes into the paper and puts a letter onto a page. And so the reason that the keys are laid out the way they are is that sometimes you hit two keys together or very close together and they both swing up at the same time and then they get stuck because they're right next to each other and they both swing towards the page. And so the QWERTY keyboard, the way this keyboard is laid out, is made in a way so that the most commonly used keys have some space between each other so that the likelihood of those arms that swing up and slap the page back in the day um, don't get stuck with each other. Now, we have better keyboards, better layouts, better ways of lay arranging the keys on the keyboards these days, but many people, when, this, when keyboards came out, um, had already learned to touch type. It was a very crucial skill at the time, and to retrain is uh, even harder to retrain up in the first place sometimes. And so, just out of convenience, just out of the way things have been before, we have kept the QWERTY keyboard layout since the inception of the typewriter way back in the day. And what I meant before, like, can we do this better? Oh, uh, sure we can. We have something called the Dvorak layout. You can actually go onto Amazon or whatever and buy a Dvorak keyboard. Um, what, it, what it does is it optimizes the, the travel of your fingers from the home position. That's another key term we're going to talk about later in this video. So right, so right here, right in the middle, we have a, the vowels, A, O, E, U, I, right, for your left hand. And the com most commonly used letters are in the front row. So 70% of the keys you will strike is right here in the home row. And when you're resting, you don't even have to use your fingers and have them travel so much uh, from the top row. Um, when you're using a QWERTY keyboard, that's not the case, right? It's a little bit more inefficient uh, because most of the keys you're going to strike 52% of the time are going to be on the top row. So you're traveling, you're moving your finger a little bit more, a little bit extra when you're using a QWERTY keyboard. So if you want to spend the time to train up on a Dvorak keyboard, um, you may find some advantages but also some disadvantages of, of uh, typing with one. Uh, I wouldn't suggest going out of your way to learn how to type on what, a, a keyboard like this unless you are going to be spending many, 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 many hours uh, typing on a keyboard, right? So the QWERTY keyboard, that's why we have it. All right, let's talk about how to place your fingers. Now, there's something called the home row, and do this with me, right? Right, do this with me right now. Stick your fingers out put them at the camera, close your eyes, and imagine that you are touching your, your keyboard. And now your right finger is J, and your left finger is F. And when you have J and F, they have little bumps on your keyboard. If you put them down, if you look at your keyboard now, they have little bumps on them. And so your index finger on your left and right hand is J and F. So close your eyes, and when I say J, flick your right finger, and when I say F, flick your left finger. All right, ready? J, J, F, J, F, F, J, F. <laughs> All right? I don't know. It's just a little drill to help get you started, because when you do start touch typing, that's the first thing you're going to want to remember, recall, without looking at your keyboard, 
is the home position, and it all starts with the F and J keys. Let's take a look about that on my keyboard now, how that looks. Right. If you look at my keyboard, there's the F and J key right there, and I'm going to start with my index fingers and place them right down on my F and J key. I can feel the little bumps on there. And then I'm going to take my other fingers and put them out on the keys next to them with my thumb resting on the space bar. All right, my finger, my head, my shoulders again are relaxed. My hands are in a bit of a cup position and I can feel those little bumps on my home key with J and F, right? Take your hands off and practice getting your hands in the right position without looking at, I just looked, <laughs> without looking at them because you can feel around with those bumps. So that's a good kind of first step when you start into touch typing. Take your hands off, know where your keyboard is, and get your hands back on into the right position without having to look and feel around for those little bumps. Because sometimes when you're touch typing, you're, you're, you get out of position and you want to get back into position, you're going to naturally start feeling for these bumps without even thinking about it when you start to really get good at touch typing. So that's the home row, and that's your fingers. Remember, J and F, J and F. Crucial to get started. Where is J and F? You'll feel those little bumps and find that natural position for your arms and hands and shoulders when you're in the home row, in the home position. And from there, you're going to start to learn where to move each finger depending on which key you want to hit. And it's very simple to think about. You can look at this diagram. It might help you a little bit as well, but um, it's simple enough to think like each key that's above that finger on the home row is going to be the key, the finger you're going to use to hit that key. What becomes a little more complicated when you get better is you need, sometimes you need to hit multiple keys at the same time, like shift or control, alt, or something like that. Uh, we'll get into that maybe in actions per minute if you're like an uh, esports gamer or something. All these things are crucial in how you combine keys together as well. But for the most part, you think about which key is closest to that finger and you use that finger to hit it. And that is your key, your fingering. Um, like when you learn how to play the piano, you have numbers on your fingers. Think of it just as connecting letters to your fingers. And as you train yourself to do touch typing, you're going to try your best to use the correct finger because uh, doing this, making, forcing yourself to use the correct fingers might slow you down in the beginning, but it's going to speed you up over time because your fingers are traveling less uh, to hit the keys, and you can hit more keys successfully be, uh, in a row because you're using multiple fingers to hit multiple keys, and you're going to be faster in the long run. Right? So that's the finger position and the home row. Let's talk about what you want to do to level up, level up, level up, level up. So Words per minute is mo the most common kind of tool, the most common uh, way that people express how fast they type. Uh, that's for English writers, you know, people that are writing in English, they can compare that. But uh, you want to be able to usually compare with other languages too. So then CPM becomes a very popular way to measure how fast of a typer you are. I think the average person types around 30 to 40 words per minute. That translates to something like 100 and 140 characters per minute. Um, but if you can get that up towards 100 words per minute, you can just imagine that you are putting words onto paper and you can type three times as fast. Therefore, you are finishing your work uh, three times faster. And if you're having to spend hours writing, you can imagine how much time you're saving by learning just a little bit faster on your words per minute and your characters per minute. And if you go to any of the websites, perhaps you'll find somebody in the description for this video to test how fast you type. Before you start into your adventure, it's good to get a baseline uh, kind of speed that you're starting with uh, when you get into it. Actions per minute is something in the esports world. I'm, I'm big into watching esports, things like uh, StarCraft, action per minute is a huge thing. Uh, being able to uh, know what keys are involved in, com in utilizing your troops or making movements in a game and doing them very, very quick. And the best pro players in the world are doing hundreds of actions per minute 
uh, and that's measured uh, in how quickly they can move their keys and use their fingers efficiently in a keyboard. So when you start typing, you're going to take note of your words per minute, your characters per minute. And as you start, you may see a little dip. You may get slower because you're, you've got some bad habits built up. That's good. Uh, you'll see yourself come back up after a time and surpass your old speed if you keep up those good habits of using the right fingers and do not look at the keyboard. All right, before I go for this video, I'm going to say this again and again and again. If you want, get, first get that uh, good positioning of your body, get those ergonomics in place, get your hands rested on that keyboard and find those home row keys with the little bumps, that J and F key, and start using the correct fingers uh, start using some of these tools that I'm going to show you, but do not look down. Right? Try your best not to look at the keyboard as much as possible because that is going to put in the, the physical movement of moving towards the keys into your memory instead of looking at them. So you might make mistakes, you might be slow in the beginning, but try not to look down uh, as much as possible. Right? And try not to be going super fast right away. You want to be comfortable. Find a comfortable way, comfortable speed to type, because that also is going to help you type longer in the long run without having to get tired or taxing your body in a long way. So in the long run, that's much better. If you want to take this on and find some tools to learn your skills in typing, I suggest that you come and help uh, join us at TogetherLearning.com. We have a whole list and array of tools and um, websites and competitions that we run to help each other, motivate each other, compete with each other to help us become more efficient typers. And it's in the bigger picture of becoming digitally literate, knowing how to do things like Google Power Search or understanding how the internet works and how we find websites and things like that. You can find that all at togetherlearning.com and we hope to see you online sometime soon. See you in the next video, guys. Thanks. Bye-bye.